and welcome once again to Banking and Financial Institution. My name is Mrs. Joan Ricamora de Lisay, and in this video, we will briefly discuss the banking institutions. The banking institution in the Philippines can be categorized as private banking and government banking. The private banking institutions are comprised of commercial banking, such as universal banks and ordinary commercial banks, thrift banks, like savings and mortgage banks, and of course, the rural banks. The government banking institution, on the other hand, consists of the Philippine National Bank, Development Bank of the Philippines, Land Bank of the Philippines, and the Philippine Amana Bank. Let's start with the Development Bank of the Philippines, which was established in 1946 as the Rehabilitation Finance Corporation under Republic Act No. 85. This was established to attend to the requirements and provide credit facilities for the rehabilitation and development after World War II. The DBP, under its new charter, is classified as a development bank and may perform all other functions of a thrift bank. Its primary objective is to provide banking services, principally to cater to the medium and long-term needs of agricultural and industrial enterprises with emphasis on the SME or small and medium scale industries. The affairs and business of the bank are directed and its corporate powers exercised by a board of directors. It consists of nine members which is appointed by the President of the Republic of the Philippines. The bank is capitalized at 5 billion and is fully subscribed by the government. Next, we have the Philippine Amana Bank, which was established in 1974 to promote and accelerate the socio-economic development of Mindanao, especially in the predominantly Muslim province and economically depressed areas of Cotabato, Lanao del Sur, Lanao del Norte, Zamboanga del Sur, and Norte. However, it is also based on the Islamic concept of banking following the no interest and partnership principles. So in 1990, the bank became a universal bank through Republic Act Number no. 6848 or what we call Charter of Alamana Islamic Investment Bank of the Philippines or AAIIBP. Land Bank of the Philippines this was organized in 1963 to provide timely and adequate financial support to the agrarian reform program. Its lending activities are geared primarily towards helping farmers acquire land under the agrarian reform program. In August 8, 1963, Republic Act 3844 or Agricultural Land Reform Code created the Land Bank of the Philippines to finance the acquisition and distribution of agricultural estates for division and resale to small landholders as well as the purchase of the land holding of the agricultural lessee. So you see the importance of this. Land Bank also have different foundations and subsidiaries like the Land Bank Countryside Development Foundation Incorporated or LCDFI, which were recently conducted. In partnership with Romlon State University, we recently conducted financial literacy program on basic financial literacy education for us to train the unbanked farmers to become profitable and bankable. This is one of the efforts of the government bank to maintain the sustainability of the livelihood programs for farmers and fishers. Again, the LCDFI provides the following services and programs, financial literacy program, capacity building program, and enterprise development program. Next, we have the Philippine National Bank, 
which was initially established as a government-owned banking institution on July 22, 1916, with its headquarters in Escolta, Manila. Its primary mandate was to provide financial services to the Philippine industry and agricultural system and to support the government's economic development effort. So just a quick history. During the First World War, then raging in Europe, generated huge demand for the country's major exports. Namely, of course, we have the sugar, copra, coconut oil, and tobacco. However, not much was being done to develop the industries that produced these sought-after crops since access to credit facilities was limited. So to solve this problem, Henderson Martin, the vice governor of the Philippines, together with Mr. Miguel Cuaderno, who later became the central bank governor, they both drafted the Charter for a National Bank. And in 1949, in effect, they acted as the country's central bank. In this effect, PNB's role as issuer of currency notes, custodianship of bank reserves, sole depository of government funds, and clearing house of the banking system stopped. Therefore, PNB launched the first online electronic data processing system in the entire Far East. The bank was acquired by Tycoon Lushotan after it was privatized by the government and became the first universal bank in the Philippines in 1980. After its merger with the Tan-owned Allied Bank on February 9, 2013, PNB became fifth largest private domestic bank in the country. Let's move to the second part, the private banking institutions. These companies perform the service of safekeeping funds through the acceptance of money deposits and the provision of credit through lending money. The first is the commercial bank. This covers the widest range of functions among all financial intermediaries. The term commercial bank refers to a financial institution and here are the following functions. Accepts deposits, offers checking account services, make various loans, offers basic financial products like certificates of deposits, and savings accounts of individuals and small businesses. So let's look at the logo of some of the examples of a commercial bank here in the Philippines. We have BDO, BPI, Security Bank, Metro Bank, China Bank, Union Bank, RCBC, Land Bank, PNB, and Development Bank of the Philippines. One of the functions of commercial banks is a deposit operation. A commercial bank is authorized to accept or create demand deposits, accept savings and time deposits which earn interest, and may also offer now accounts or what we call negotiable order of withdrawal. Another function is the borrowing operations. A commercial bank may borrow from BSP and other government and private financial institutions to augment its working capital and loanable funds. Borrowings from the Banco Central may take the form of either rediscounting or direct advance. So previously, I've already discussed rediscounting, but just to reiterate, this is a method or a mode of borrowing where the bank assigns in favor of the BSP the eligible borrower's papers in accordance with what they have agreed upon, the guidelines, terms, and conditions, while the direct advance or loan, as what we have discussed before, BSP being the lender of last resort, may grant direct advances to a commercial bank in times of emergency or when it can no longer be allowed to rediscount its eligible borrower's papers. Another function is the deposit substitute operations, which is also known as the quasi-banking or money market operations. Another function is the lending operations. Loans granted by a commercial bank may be classified as a secured or unsecured loans. 
depending on its collateral. Secured loans are loans that are secured by real estate mortgage. This requires some type of collateral as a condition of borrowing. While the unsecured loans are loans granted against personal security, this doesn't require any type of collateral. Instead of relying on a borrower's asset or uh, as a security, lenders approve unsecured loans based on a borrower's credit worthiness. So your credit rating is very important when you are securing a loan. So an example of this would be personal loan, student loan, and credit cards. Thriftbacks. These are savings in mortgage banks, stock savings and loan associations, and even private development banks, which in addition to accepting savings and time deposits, they perform the following functions. So thrift banks may grant loans, may invest in readily marketable bonds and other debt securities. So as compared to commercial banks, thrift banks usually offer higher yields on savings accounts and provide limited lending services to businesses. Rural banks. These are regional banks operating primarily to serve the needs of people in the provinces and suburban areas. They may grant short-term loans to farmers, merchants, cooperatives to finance their requirements in the pursuit of their business, which are principally aimed at countryside development. The Banco Central has granted incentives to organizers of rural banks. Such incentives include tax exemptions and nominal interest rates. Why are there such incentives? Napansin ni BSP na dahil sa kakulangan ng ganitong banko, napipilitan ng ilan na umutang sa 5-6 or loan sharks na merong napakataas na patong na interest. So instead of helping them, they are burdened of paying their debts. These incentives by BSP are intended to encourage the formation of more rural banks in the areas where credit facilities have been inadequate or limited. So here in Romblon, we have Manor Bank, Community Rural Bank of Romblon, Rural Bank of Santa Fe, and One Network Bank, a subsidiary of Banco de Oro or BDO. Before I end this video, let me leave you with the words of Benjamin Franklin. A penny saved is a penny earned. What does this mean? No matter how small your savings is, it is always important to save your money because it protects you in the event of a financial emergency. Okay, so I hope you learned a lot from this video. For more information about this topic, you may visit these references or you may refer to our module. Don't forget to like and subscribe. For more videos, please like this. Thanks for listening and stay safe everyone!